As discussed already, machine learning algorithms are very dependent on the underlying data and its quality. But not only the correctness and completeness of the data is important to inspect, depending on whether you look at numerical values or categorical values, pre-processing them accordingly also is very crucial to a successful application of machine learning algorithms. Let's first take a look at numerical data. Some machine learning algorithms, like the decision trees, use inequalities to learn patterns from the data. However, most of the popular algorithms use some kind of distance measure. In some cases, it is more obvious than in others. Let's think about a small example. We have two attributes, one being the height of a person and the other being their respective monthly income. If we now think about two persons, one being 190 centimeters tall and the other 150, we would consider it a rather significant difference in height. The taller person earns 2,500 a month, the smaller person earns 2,600. In this case, while we can still observe a notable difference, we would most likely say that compared to the height difference, the difference in salary is less significant. If we keep the values as they are, however, the absolute distance is bigger in the case of the salary attribute. If we consider house pricing as an additional attribute, you can imagine that small differences to us could still mean a couple of thousands in absolute numbers. Therefore, we want to scale numerical values for most algorithms that we use. As mentioned, for algorithms that are solely based on rules or inequalities such as decision trees, it is not necessary to scale the data. But scaling is not only important for the above mentioned example, it can also help to speed up convergence for many optimization problems. This is especially helpful for time-intensive algorithms such as neural networks. So how do we scale data? There is a number of different approaches one can choose for scaling. Some of the more popular ones are the min-max scaling, mean normalization or standardization. The min-max scaling approach is among the simpler ones. To visualize the idea behind it, let's take a look at a group of differently sized people. With min-max scaling, we set a custom interval, usually between 0 and 1, or minus 1 and 1. We then shrink or expand all of our values, equal to its proportions, until our maximum value is our defined maximum, and same for the minimum. This is a very fast and easy to understand approach, but it is also very sensitive to outliers, as they will drastically impact the proportions. So in case your data has a small standard deviation with no significant outliers, this scaling approach is a good choice. A very similar approach to the min-max scaling is the mean normalization. In this case, you do not scale your data points to be defined to a defined minimum and maximum, but you scale it around the mean of your data. This results in values between minus one and one, which are centered around zero as mean value. Having zero as the mean of your scaled data is great for approaches that assume zero-centric data, such as the principal component analysis. Both of the mentioned approaches are sensitive to outliers. So what if we, so what if we do have outliers in our dataset and do not want our scaling approach to be too much affected by them? The answer to this is standardization. Instead of scaling our values, we will, we will replace them by the set values. The set value describes how far away a data point is from the mean of your data with standard deviation as measurement. So for example, a set value of two tells us that your data is two standard deviations away from the respective mean. This approach expects data that is normally distributed though. So in case this does not apply to the data, we might want to look into different scaling approaches. But what if scaling does not really fit to what we want to achieve? For instance, we might want to cluster certain intervals into a single group. Take salary as an example. In some applications, we might want to have 0 to 1000, 1000 to 2000, 2000 to 3000, and so on, as our range as, our range as this information better fits our use case. We would call this process discretization, as we get rid of the continuous characteristic of our data by assigning them to different buckets. However, after doing this activity, we might want to reassign new values such as 0, 1, 2, 3 to indicate different groups, 
or I apply some scaling methods afterwards. You could also think of the newly obtained buckets as categories or labels, meaning that the numbers do not matter in terms of mathematical context. In that case, our data fits better to a class of categorical data, which we will discuss in the next video. But before we move on to categorical data, we want to briefly talk about how to deal with missing numerical values as well. So there are two main strategies we can consider, imputing values and deleting information. Deleting information in the context of missing values does not refer to the information that is already missing, of course. But as we want to ensure that our algorithm can work at its, be as it at its best, we also need complete data. Therefore, one of the strategies is deleting all the rows that contain any missing value. If the missing value, however, mostly occurs in a certain column or attribute, we can also decide to just drop the attribute accordingly. This obviously leads to a smaller dataset or reduced available information, which can then also impact the performance of our machine learning model. So in order to avoid deleting information, we could opt for imputing our values. Imputing means that we will assume a value instead of leaving it empty. For this, we can, once again, use different approaches depending on what fits our data better. Examples are taking the mean of the available data, the last observed value from another data sample, or using algorithms to project the value in case of time series or other sequences. Choosing the appropriate pre-processing approach demands you to have a good understanding of your data as well as a good overview of suitable methods. But there is no one-fits-all approach, and therefore you should always try a set of different pre-processing approaches to see what works best in your specific use case.